Well, the off season starts a little early. Uh, we're just a couple of days since our last game that saw us clinch automatic promotion to the Premier League. Still have the QPR game left to play, but the board has approached me and want to offer me a new contract. Uh, so, club culture is all the same. Nothing new in here. So, the end of next year, we're making 600 and... 668 or 688,000 a year, I forget which one. So this uh, you know more than doubles our salary to 1.54 million. I can live with that. Uh can we make it 15? Uh, no, I guess I can't. Yeah, there we go. And how about only a 25% drop? They took it. And it's a 3-year deal. So that's good. So a new three-year deal that I will not see the end of. All right. Well, again, moving on, we're not going to watch the QPR game. I'm going to get to the off-season stuff. We'll be back to look at uh, the kit sales and everything else. So stay tuned for that. All right. So we have uh, finished up. We beat QPR, uh, which sent them into relegation. We uh, played a fully rotated squad. Leighton Stewart started, scored two goals. So uh, now I want to keep him more than ever. Hello, how are you? Uh, here is our uh, best 11. Uh, so Craig Mitchell uh, has entered the best 11 for the club. And he is going to be on the bench. Wow, okay, interesting. Elliot Freer still on the left side there. But... Uh, that's a who's who of, uh, of our club over the years that we've been here. 23-24 uh, season review. Top half finish was our goal. We secured promotion. Lost in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Runner-up in the league. Third round loss in the Carabao Cup to Leicester. 81% capacity. And 28 players played. Oddly enough, 10th highest in the league. So not, uh, usually we dominate that, that category. I've got the new contract. Uh, let's see. So they have, uh, okay, this is my first time seeing this because in my contract they did not change it. So next season, fight bravely against relegation. They will improve training and youth facilities and then work on remaining in the Premier League. Uh, we'll accept that. Squad dynamics. We kind of looked at that a little while ago. End of season team meeting. Let's be passionate. Well, that's not true. <laughs> You've done brilliantly. Even though we'll probably come back down. Eh. Let's go that route. All right. So we'll be happy with that. Squad goes on break. We've signed McGinley to, uh, he's the first one to get some more money. He signs a $1.3 million contract uh, per year for three years. And uh, he will be, I, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm thinking he, he, I may bump him to a reserve because Wharton is actually, I think, better than him at that. And they're both left-footed. If I can get another left back, then I think McGinley becomes cover. He becomes my number three center back. But we'll see. He's happy with the contract. And where do we want to go? So because I've kicked ass. So Portugal, Spain. Southwest England, I'm picturing geography, that's over towards the Wales side, correct? But it would not be in Wales because it's still in England, right? Am I correct about that? Scotland, the Highlands would be interesting. Uh, Ireland, Scotland and Ireland are intriguing to me because I've. you guys have to realize I've never been over there. So those are places I would love to go visit and see some of the locks and the moors and you know the, the the old castles and you know things that you know we here in america only get to read about in history books austria switzerland and france 
you know what? I'm going to Ireland. By God, that's where I'm going. Don't want to stir up anything political. That is Ireland, right? Northern Ireland, or is it? I know Scotland was Braveheart, right? William Wallace. I don't know. Anyway, don't want to stir anything up. I just want to go to Ireland, please. I think it's nice that they uh, they let me get let me go somewhere. All right, annual season awards. Harvey White, Player of the Season, with thirty five percent. Ida and Williams. All three of those guys will not be coming back. Uh, Liverpool laughed off any interest in Williams on my inquiry. Goal of the season is David Vieira against Middlesbrough. Ball was cleared out. Wharton controlled it, brought it back in. And Vieira just pings it 30 yards out. 30, maybe? Yeah, at least 30. At least 30. I was right. I, I knew that. Uh, Gabrielle Bellotti, signing of the season, a free from AC Milan, became our starting center back and young player of the season, Harvey White. I am so gutted that White <laughs> and Ida are going to the MLS. Why? Um, I will be trying to hunt them down and seeing if I can get them away from Cincinnati. But it's also going to depend on how much it'll cost and what else is out there, right? So, anyway, we'll be back with any more news. You remember what I asked, like, literally just a few minutes ago about expanding the stadium and, and all that? Well, we're not going to expand the stadium. We're going to build a whole new stadium. And it's going to be called Forest Green Stadium. I'm not really happy about that. Not really happy about that. It's going to cost about $35.5 million, and they will sell the new lawn for $1.1 million. And they've got taken out another loan. Oh, I'm not liking the loan thing. 20,000 seats, no roof, under soil heating. So snow, water, that's good. And it will be, they will start construction, well, they started it yesterday. And it will be three years. So we will not, <laughs> I've never had a new stadium constructed, so we will not see the completion of this. That really sucks. Uh, sponsorship deal will pick up about nine and a quarter million. And we are going to rent Ashton Gate. New lawn does not meet Premier League requirements. So Ashton Gate. This is in England, in Bristol. All right. So I'm guessing, is this where Bristol City plays? Yes, they do play at Ashton Gate. So are we going to have double, double matches here? Is that what's going to happen next year for the next three years? Wow. Finances, another bank loan, holy crap, 10 years, and that is $300,000 a month. That should be pretty affordable. Oh, and somebody, I asked the question over, uh, you guys may remember me talking about this transfer debt. I had no idea what it was. This is when you like have future things agreed to, like installments or, you know. So this means that we actually have, uh, I think, income coming in. I think that's what it means. Where's transfers? Yeah, we have, we have sell-ons and appearances. So I think that's what that means. We'll see. There's Alex Lowry, the guy that we're picking up. So a new stadium, new stadium, interesting. And they're doing another improvement to the training and youth facilities. We'll go on board. So building a new ground. So this was already in progress, and they're going to do another? Because this should have been done soon. So this will actually finish in season. So cool. 
So we have great training facilities now. That's nice. All right. Well, that's the season. That's the off-season stuff. So some big news. New stadium. Should have named it after me. But it'll be interesting. 23-220. That's more than double our current seating that we were selling out. So hopefully that really helps bring in some more match day revenue. I am going to be interested to see what that does for income. We'll see. Uh, oh, looks like a new record. 27 goals broke his record from four years ago where he scored 26. So a new team record. That's awesome. All right. Well, let me get into some transfer business now, guys, unless something else comes up. All right, here's our commercial summary. We sold uh, 7,674 kits. Ida, Collins, White, Williams, and Oscar, the top five. And you can see our annual revenue uh, increased slightly for total sponsorship. Uh, corporate and hospitality went up about 220,000. Uh, about a hundred and almost 200,000 for match day commercial and retail prize money was down about forty thousand dollars about four hundred thousand dollars my bad too many zeros for me to count I'm not used to that and competition prize money was down dramatically I don't know how do we get three and a half million I don't remember all right scouting budget oh we are gonna be hiring uh, we've got extensions for one more physio and two more coaches and then i'm gonna look and see what coaches i want to get rid of and and weed out so anyway uh we'll do that and uh starting i'm starting to get some scouting in i put a new short-term focus in uh for scouting so hopefully we have some players starting to hit the docket here real soon uh but probably not until uh closer to the end of the actual season because for some reason even though we are promoted I don't believe the game recognizes you as promoted until that date that you get like the new schedule and everything else it's weird and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's accurate because I've had some players in previous seasons that were like oh you're not you know I want to play at a higher level and I'm like I'm going to the Premier League. There isn't a higher level, you know. <laughs> and then as soon as as soon as that email comes around with the with the you know Premier League, and you actually appear in the Premier League table, all of a sudden that same guy will talk to you. It's weird. Anyway, transfers coming up. All right. So the transfer window has just opened. So we're bringing in players that we've already signed. Most of them earlier last year. We do have one new signing. So let's take a look at these guys. We'll start off with Stephen Carroll. He's an 18 year old fullback, currently two star potential, but uh, pretty good upside four star potential. He comes to us on a free uh, from Liverpool. This is one of the guys that we, you know, this is our youth intake. We know when the big clubs release young players, we pick up the scraps. <laughs> so he signs a $56,000 contract. Next up is another young player, Robert Swaby or Swaby. Four and a half star potential. He comes out of Liverpool's system as well. They deemed him surplus, B-plus grade. Hopefully we can just develop these players with our training facilities getting upgraded and then turn them on for a profit or see them, you know, reach potential and, you know, become a contributing part of the club. Of course, in the, you know, probably going into the last year of our save, I would guess. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Dean Oliver, another youngster, uh, get a B grade on him. Uh, he comes out of the Man City system where they released him. And Alex Lowry. Now, Lowry was not one of the youngsters. This is the guy that we signed, a uh, 20-year-old Scottish player, uh, five-star potential, three-star current, midfielder. I really see him coming in 
and uh, you know we're going to be uh, losing White. Uh, McGinnis is more in my plans on the right wing. Vieira plays that defensive mid, so this is going to be some depth, and we may try to retrain him if we can to maybe split out to a wing. He's got decent crossing, of course. I've got to readjust thoughts from championship level to the Premier League, uh, so but he does give us some depth. A very, very good passer, first touch. He does have some pace, natural fitness. So 20 years old, he's just going to get better, and I think he'll do a good job for us. Uh, what did we pay for him? Oh, we got him on a free, and you can't beat the price. Now, we did spend our first money of the window, and that is on Flynn Downs. Now, he's a 25-year-old Englishman. And he comes to us from Fulham. Scored five goals, three assists last year in the championship. We pay thirteen and a half million for him. They bought him about four years ago for ten and a half from Ipswich. He, uh, you know, he's made a few Premier League appearances. Nothing stellar, but hopefully uh, he can do the business for us. Four star current ability, four and a half star potential. He is twenty five. So, but he's very good physically. Mentals are almost double digits across the board, uh, just flair. And that's not something I've got to have in, in my central midfielder. Uh, first touch is incredible. Heading is incredible. Marking, passing, tackling, and technique. Excellent work rate. Uh, stamina's way up there. So this, this is a guy that I'm going to be looking at real hard. Uh, I think uh, he is going to slot in ahead of Diacati in that midfield spot. Diacati can then slide back to the defensive mid if we stick with that tactic. Uh, Downs would actually be behind Vieira and Diacati uh, in that defensive mid, but he could also transition back and do the business. Now, he's only 5'8", so I probably wouldn't play him at center back but he could do the job. So that's our first batch of transfers. So we will take a look at those. Uh, that is a record transfer for us as well. Uh, <laughs> previously, it was 1.3 million for Daniel Hart. We just signed him a few years ago. So it's also a record high in spending on, in one season. So uh, that's nice. All right, we'll be back when there's anything else uh, to take a look at. All right, we have our first bit of transfer news after the regular stuff. Now that we're into the window, we're scouting people, we're making bids. We have signed 25-year-old winger Ignacio La Quintana, and he cost us a $3 million fee, signs for $2.41 million a year. There you can see the terms of his contract. Uh, we are going to go ahead and accept that and take a look at our new winger. So 25 years old from Uruguay, uh, capped at the U23 level, and he is now 25. Physically pretty imposing. He's only 5'10", 152 pounds, but uh, very pacey. A lot of acceleration and agility. I am looking at him, and he's a 92 rating. That's just pretty astounding. So... I think he's going to be our new starting uh, midfielder on the right right wing. And he has good crossing ability, dribbling ability, first touch, passing. He's just really well-rounded. His mentals are all there. Off the ball, he's got a lot of flair, which I don't usually look for that in players, but that's nice to get. Of course, we're getting a South American here. So that is very nice. Taking a look at his history, uh, Udinese sound him, sounded him, signed him for five and a half million uh, two years ago, and he had two goals in eleven matches this year, and no goals in six matches uh, last uh, season before. But uh, he, you know, he is scoring at Serie A. He scored five with Empoli, and he has played at some of the top leagues. So uh, we pick him up. And we actually got him for less than uh, he was signed for, so that's good. 
and definitely look to uh, get him into the lineup. So uh, that's the first signing, hopefully the first of many, because we do have uh, about six or seven more offers out. So stay tuned. All right, we're starting to turn some things over here. Uh, we have just signed Albie Morgan, a 24-year-old midfielder, end of contract. Uh, so he's coming on a free. He signs for 949000 a year for three seasons. Uh, there you see the terms. And taking a look at Albie, he is a 24-year-old English player, not capped, uh, very, very good physically. He's got a lot of pace. And he is a midfielder, not a position I particularly needed, but he can dribble. Finishing's not bad. First touch, long shots, passing, technique, just very well-rounded. If we jump into the scouting report, overall top speed is his strongest attribute. Uh, not very good at jumping or marking, so he's not going to be a defensive style player, more on the attacking side. He can play a couple of positions, but in that central midfield, you have to remember, we are losing Harvey White and uh, McGinnis, I'm viewing more as the right winger uh, depth there. So Albi basically comes in as our number two uh, behind Diacate, and if we look at the defensive mid, he would be basically number three there. Kiko is still contracted. I need to get him out of here. Oh, you know what? And he's out of contract, isn't he? Yeah, they're not going to offer me anything. Uh, so anyway, we are going to accept that deal. And we also have another deal coming in. Daniel Nomov uh, is going to be coming in. Uh, he's passed his physical. And he is a goalkeeper, signs for $500,000 on the fee, $1.32 million on uh, his contract. First choice goalkeeper, we are going to accept that. Taking a look at him, he's Bulgarian. Uh, he comes over from FC Porto, who bought him for $1.3 million a couple of years ago. And he's been loaned out to uh, Maritimo for a couple of years. This past year in the Prima Liga, Primera Liga gave up 35 goals in 34 matches, 11 clean sheets, pretty solid. He's got a couple of deficiencies that Palmer's better, but just overall, just overall, he is a better, better goalkeeper. If we take a look here, they grade him out at three-star current, uh, four-star potential, whereas Palmer's maxed out. So in in fact, we're going to go ahead and offer him out for an unspecified amount, see what we get, and maybe we can make some of that money back. But there's our new number one choice at goalkeeper. And you know the, the reserve guy that we had, uh, what was his name? I forgot. Uh, Clark, Rob Clark. Uh, he's got four-star potential as well, and he's right there with Palmer. We looked at him last season. So... Uh, Palmer's going to be the odd man out. He's done a great job for us over the seasons. Uh, in fact, let's take a look at him. So he's 27 years old, but he is maxed out. We signed him for 45000 Yeah, that was the winter transfer that year. So he had started with West Brom. Uh, he played 16 matches, gave up 9 goals, 10 shutouts. Oh, so he gave up nine and six, had 10 clean sheets. Great year for him there. Last year, 36 matches, 42 allowed, 12 shutouts. Again, another great year. And then this year, 41 starts, 43 allowed, 13 clean sheets. I can't complain anything about him. He did a bang-up job for us and uh, really anchored that, that, uh, that defense for us. But just looking to improve now. So he does find himself expendable. Well, Sheffield Wednesday just made an offer for Kiko, end of contract. So uh, he will be leaving us and taking his $253,000 contract with him. And we have another signing to announce. It is Daniel Anyembe, a 25-year-old fullback. $2.8 million fee, $882,000 salary. 
Uh, there's the rest of the terms and conditions. But taking a look at him, he is Danish, three under 21 caps for his country, valued at 1.3 million. And we don't know all of his ratings. I, I had him scouted, but he was good enough that I said, yeah, let's go ahead and sign him. Look at the pace on this guy. Definitely an attacking right back. <laughs> as long as he can cross the ball halfway decently, uh, I'm going to be very happy. He can play defense. He can mark. Tackling is going to be at least average. Passing is a, a deficiency, but he's got a solid work rate, good teamwork, positioning's above average, decision making's there, anticipation. I am going to assume, and yes, I know what happens when you assume things, but I'm going to assume that with all these other ratings, that his crossing and dribbling is going to be sufficient. <laughs> um, three goals, three assists in 32 starts and a 7.17 average rating. Passing 67%, which one would expect with that. Tackles won 77%. And shots on target just 20%. I'm not expecting finishing to be there. Really don't want him taking a lot of shots anyway. So, pretty happy to get this guy. If we take a look, uh, my scouts think he's currently at a good championship level. Uh, Three-star current with the ability to get to four. Five-star potential. Of course, we haven't gotten him in yet. Nico Williams is gone, so keep that in mind. Yanev is gone as well as is Mirez. So, he is potentially our new starting right back. And we have another signing to announce. It is 20-year-old midfielder Marcos Rogerio. Three and a half million fee, 975000 a year. Five-year contract. So uh, that's our first big inking. Uh, we've got a few things in here. $23.5 million release clause for clubs in uh, cup competition. $14 million release clause if we're relegated. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's what's going on. Taking a look at him, he is a left-side winger. Not a position I was particularly looking at, but, but there was a reason to make this move. He's not a great crosser. So I see him, he can, I mean, but look, look at the pace. He is going to be a disruptive factor in the attacking zone. He's got flair, determination, work rates above average, composed, anticipation. Oh, my God, this guy's going to do so much stuff. He can dribble. First touch is off the charts. He can pass. Good technique. So I think what we're going to do with him is maybe make him more of a uh, inverted winger or an inside forward. You know, I think an inverted winger where he comes more up into this number 10 spot and maybe plays like a shadow striker type position behind the number nine. And then that means we're going to have to take that central midfielder and make him a Mazzala to where he drifts out. Uh, but, you know, so less crossing from him, more coming in and playing balls up through the middle with his passing and vision. Uh, that's kind of what I see. He's a 20 year old Brazilian. He might be the only Brazilian not capped at the U-20 level, but he's only 20, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, that is our new guy. He comes to us from uh, Rio, Rio Avenue. Must be in a good part of uh, Portugal. Uh, but he came from Brazil, Panar, P Piranha. Piranha, not the fish. Uh, they paid 140000 and now have moved him on for a nice, tidy profit. So kudos to them. But he will be joining us as well. So what I project now is if we take a look at here on this left side, he actually rates better than Craig Mitchell. Craig Mitchell, if we look at him, he's got really good crossing. He's very pacey. I think I'm going to try to do a Loki Doki. I'm going to retrain him as an attacking left back. 
That's what I think I'm going to do. If we jump into the team report. So we have Wharton there, right? Let's see. Let's do a comparison. Compare with... He's not on the list. Where is Scott Wharton? Must be a position thing. All right, but we're going to set him up to train. Defender left. Complete wing back on attack. Complete wing back. So he's got the crossing, dribbling, first touch. Yeah, I don't see any reason he can't do that. I don't see any reason he can't do that. All right, well, anyway, that's what's going on there. So let me get back to business and see what else is going on. David Vieira, we gave him a new contract, and we've got two more signings. So Timothy Fosu Mensa, 26-year-old center back. Wasn't really looking for a center back. I get it. But uh, $2.1 million fee. We have $18 million in the budget right now. I can adjust my salaries but i have my payroll but i don't want to do that just yet two and a half million a year he's going to be expensive but look at he can play five positions for us <coughs> because we don't really have good dutch coverage again you saw this with the danish player earlier we don't have all of his ratings but man this guy just looks so good across the board he actually pencils in as our possibly number one right back. Definitely in the mix with upside to be our number one center back. Probably third choice left back. Third choice uh, defensive mid. And probably third choice central midfielder. So I think he'll see, you know, he'll be on the bench. And he will be playing a lot. You know, he'll get a lot of minutes. You know, he will be in the rotation. And, you know, when guys get tired, he'll be the one stepping in. So, yeah, definitely expect to see a lot of him. And Powell, God, we're going to have to change this name. Uh, Idzikowski. Powell Idzikowski. That's what I'm going with. Uh, $3.8, $13 million fee. 1.84 million a year on his contract. We're going to accept that. He is a forward. So this is our striker replacement. Plus he can play left side uh, and central mid and the two wingers if we go back to that tactic. And man, Ida's gone. So we needed somebody to step up. Stewart has some activity on him but nothing close enough to let, let me let him go. He will not discuss a new contract. I'm hopeful that we can get over that hurdle. But he's a left-footed, so he can play on the left side, allow Collins to move to the right side where Ida was last season. Physicals are out the, out the roof on this guy. He is only 5'9", not much on the jumping reach, although he can head the ball well. But dribbling, finishing, first touch, heading, Long shots, passing, off the ball. Work rate is astounding. This guy just looks so good. So taking a look at him, uh, Bayer, he comes from uh, Bayern Munich, uh, where they picked him up for $2 million out of uh, TSG, out of Hoffenheim's uh, club many, many years ago. But a $2 million buy there. And he has been with them. He's had a little bit of activity in uh, – in the German third division, seven goals in 20, 24 matches, playing a plus, you know, seven plus rating. And he played for Bayern Munich, handful of games this year, one start, four off the bench, and scored three goals in five appearances. So I think he is going to do a good job. It was a little bit of a fee, but I knew, you know, if we, at the beginning, I said, you know, we had about $10 million per position. And a lot of those positions, we didn't pay $10 million. So I went a little high here. We are going to lose and be pretty far down. And don't forget, I have not gotten my payroll hit yet. That $31 million is, I believe, with the increases, the 25 to 30% increases for promotion. So we are way in the hole, but most of that is due to 
uh, well, expenditures right now, but also the hit that we took for construction and the capital outlay for uh, renovating the current stadium, I guess, uh, is what we did there. I don't think we have anything else lined up. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not done. We're going to go ahead and get to the end of the uh, transfer window. But I, th I think that's all the moves that I've got pending. There might be one more. And I, I really want to wait until after the end of this month so we can look at the players that are gone and then I can reevaluate what's still on my roster and try to start culling some dead weight uh, that I need to get rid of. But uh, I'll do all that off camera. But any moves, you guys will see it. Well, I told you there might be one more out there. Alistair Murphy, 19-year-old midfielder. Uh, he was transfer listed by Rangers, and he is a 19-year-old midfielder. $1.2 million fee, only $220,000 on his salary. He's on that right side. This guy's blistering, and he could even fill in up top as a striker. He's only got a 10 finishing, but agility, acceleration. He's 5'9 and can't jump, but that's okay. Uh, off the ball technique for first touch dribbling this guy looks really solid i'm very excited about him uh, he's an 80 rated player by my scouts currently on a championship level uh, potential to be a premier league player in the future like this coming season <laughs> so if we take a look striker wise uh, he would be way down the list only three star potential taking a look on that right wing uh, he's five-star potential, uh, which nobody else over there is. Now, some of our new guys are not showing up in here yet because they haven't officially joined the team. But uh, Stevenson's out. Nico Williams is out. McGinnis is going to be back up over here. We do have the guys we signed a little earlier. And, uh, you know, even if we go back here, he's got some potential, but... I like it. I like it. He's a 19 year old Scotsman. So, welcome aboard. Well, what a difference a day makes. We do have some transfer news. I am wrapping up transfers. It is a new day here in the real world. Uh, so, yesterday I was recording the first portion of this video, and today I'm recording this, the second portion. Uh, we had a hurricane hit uh, Louisiana last night, which is where I am from. I do live in, in the Houston area, but I still have family back in Louisiana. And uh, my dad had uh, three trees uh, get blown down in his yard. Uh, luckily, the big one that fell missed his house and the neighbor's house, although it wiped out one of the fences that they share. So they're, you know, they've got to get that cut up and everything else. So I'm actually waiting right now if my dad needs me to come over and help or if insurance is going to take care of it. Uh, he's trying to get with insurance to see, uh, you know, what they're going to do or if we need to get over there with chainsaws and, and cut it up, which of course... I've only got the weekend before I've got to get back to work, and then I'm out of town for a funeral Thursday and Friday of this week. So crazy week, crazy times, but let's get to what you guys are here for, the transfer window. Uh, this is a youngster signing. Uh, he popped up. Uh, my scouts found him, and I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take a little bit of that. So Elias Girard, uh, he is a 17-year-old goalkeeper. We pay a $700,000 fee. He does sign a contract for $273,000 a year. It is a lot, but he's pretty good. Now, he doesn't have first touch. I mean, that may end up being on the high side, but he's got some skills. Uh, he's Belgian. Uh, he comes to us uh, from Standard Liège in Belgium in the Jupiler Pro League and came up in their system. Uh, taking a look at his uh, scouting report here. Five-star potential, two-star with the ability to get to three-star on his current ability, and that puts him right behind Rob Clark. And honestly, at 273000 I think that makes Mr. Clark expendable. So we are going to drop that to unspecified. We will see if anybody is interested in him. 
And I would like to get at least the 700000 we paid for this guy, and this guy would then become our deputy. Uh, maybe a little young, but at his, at his salary, I think we need to, uh, to do that. But that's who we've signed, and uh, we will keep on keeping on. We're halfway through July, so you know things do pick up here. Uh, we've signed a couple of friendlies, not many. Celtic, Bishops, Cleve, Athletic, Bilbao. Uh, Celtic and Bilbao, a couple of money earning friendlies. Uh, we had a whole bunch that were rejected that the uh, the assistant tried to set up. So we'll see how that goes. We'll be back with more news. Well, I just got a call, so I am heading out of state to go help my dad. So may not even finish this episode today. But Monday's episode is already going up, so that's taken care of. And then I can work on Tuesday and stuff when I get home, whatever time I get home, tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night. Or I can work on it during the week before I leave town. So I'm losing a big chunk of time, but it is what it is. Wanted to show you a couple of things here. So we are last in match day and ticket revenue. Uh, Man United, $113 million at the top of the graph. And we, are, that's 12 times more than we're going to make uh, and more than the bottom six teams combined. I think that's a problem, but, you know, I think that's a real life problem, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so we're at eight and a half million, more than half below Sheffield United. So hopefully we can stay up and then start to build that over time. Of course, likely the last season. Uh, you don't need to see that right now. We're going to go with normal. All right, well, wanted you to see that. Uh, we have signed a new coach. Uh, they're not the best coaches, but what I was trying to do was to expand our scouting knowledge. Uh, so uh, this guy, Mariella Niso Nisotaki, uh, he has knowledge of Greece, uh, Spain, uh, a lot of areas that have raised this from an orange level to a yellow, and we should start seeing more players coming through our scouting system uh, in that area. So we'll see. We'll see. That uh, that can't be bad for us, right? So we'll move into that. Uh, if we take a look with the staff, still really low on staff. Uh, we're going to have to start upgrading that. We do have room for... I have room for one more scout. I think I've got a job posted already. No. All right. So we can hire one more scout and that'll be good. I'm trying to hire scouts in other parts of the world. Some I really never paid attention to. Uh, so, you know, if you weren't aware of this, I, I saw it on a Zealand video. So you see Spencer Pryor has knowledge of England, uh, Amando Noserio, uh, in Italy. So if you hire a coach that is international, he brings a built-in scouting knowledge of that area. And so you can see we are starting to develop some South American uh, interest that, you know, so we're starting to see players from South America hit, hit the board uh, because of this, of Nisitaki as well. Very little, but he was the only Spanish. He was not a very good coach, but because he was because he was in, because he knew Spain, that's why I hired him because everybody else was either England. They did have a guy from Scotland who I didn't see in the list, but I am assuming if we know England and Northern Ireland and whatnot and you know then then we're going to know Scotland as well. Just a guess there since it's not even in the list. And that may be because it's not a playable. I don't I don't remember. But anyway, we'll see you guys back with any last minute transfer news as we're moving into the friendlies right now. We did lose to Celtic three to one, but kind of expected that.